Hi folks, welcome everyone. Um, thanks for joining us for today's webinar. As part of our customer success initiative, today is the 10th in a series of webinars that we're aiming to deliver on a monthly basis between product training, product updates, tips and tricks to help maximize your use of the platform and to keep you informed of anything that maybe you didn't know that we did or to help you get the most out of the products that, we, that, we, uh, that you use from us. Uh, just a little housekeeping before we get started if you have any questions during the presentation or have some feedback please type them into the question box in your go to webinar control panel um all we might not be able to get through all of them but we'll answer as many as, you, as we can at the end if we can't get to them all we'll answer them separately by email after the webinar all are welcome My name is Chris Dunphy. I'm a customer success manager here in AFIX. I've been with the company for the last six years. Um, we've previously led the support team here in AFIX, as some of you might know, and they work in our customer success department. Uh, for those of you who have joined in over the last few sessions, we've demoed our new management interface, visual page builder tools. We've delivered a practical set of CMS training that was aimed at tips and tricks to get the most out of blocks and visual page builder, things like that. Um, we've had Nino and Lindsay on, and we've had Graham, um, our general manager on, and we've recently had um, uh, an outside invite with uh, Ian McLaughlin from Lamborn Digital uh, come on our last webinar, which was really, really helpful. That was to give us some tips and tricks on SEO and how, to, how working with a digital marketing partner can be of really good benefit for your use of like web shop um, and get to kind of maximize your SEO footprint. Um, this session is a walkthrough of sales rep, our, our mobile and van sales app and what it has to offer and how it works in conjunction with your with your ERP. I suppose the, the, the reason why the reason for conducting this with sales rep, while we may have our you know our our, our sales team will converse with um, uh, you our customers um, to, to see if there's uh, you know uh, the need for such a for such uh, an app in your organization um, but I suppose maybe over time as the app changes as it's been improved upon or maybe as the needs of maybe you and your own business has changed maybe 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 there is a requirement for sales rep now and uh, perhaps seeing as we're we're all allowed out of the house and we can you know rep we have reps on the road again things like that uh, but also from the point of view that maybe maybe the last time that your reps had some training was a number of years ago when they were using the older version of sales rep and now they're on the newer version of sales rep and again maybe there's just things that they kind of do maybe robotic is the wrong word but maybe that they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and that it could be improved upon or if that there's features in the background that they don't really they or you don't really know that we offer um, with sales rep or simply just a bit of refresher training. Um, this broadly will kind of cope or sorry, this broadly will demonstrate all of that, I think. Um, of course, if there's any, like I said, when there's some questions at the end, I'm happy to um, answer them here. Maybe it's about functionality. Maybe it's about comparatives to maybe the web shop because that's probably where some of the questions come up from time to time dual functionality between the web, how can your customers maybe work hand in hand with using a web, the web shop or a pocket shop, and also how that could benefit your reps on the road. Um, but I hope maybe we can kind of answer some of those questions uh, today, or maybe even just give some of those answers directly uh, through this uh, this walkthrough. Um, so what we're gonna be covering and walking through here, will be managing the catalog, um, you know, broadly, uh, we'll at a high level we'll look at you know maybe a, not to not to kind of step on the toes of Nino and Lindsay who did a great April webinar managing multiple catalogs. We'll touch slightly on managing your catalog on sales rep, um, how you can improve search on the on the device with regard to like search and keywords, uh, and we'll show some kind of clear examples of how that can be of benefit like today without any development work or anything like that that you can kind of manage yourself. Um, creating product options, but also just really showing how product options are structured on sales rep in comparison to web shop. 
um, there's maybe been a few queries over 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 that recently, so it'd be good to kind of clarify that now. Um, the answer is it's really the same, but maybe it's just down to the interpretation of how it is what you're what you're what, what you're viewing. Um, using favorites, um, I don't think we we did a good coverage on web shop of this, but I think that there's a trick missed on sales rep. Um, again, something that could be really helpful for reps. Um, but again, we'll 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 show it off when 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 we when we get to that point. Um, we're going to be using we have a, a a demonstration integration here with uh, an ERP system, so we're going to show an order as well as other information that's stored in the ERP uh, getting submitted from sales rep into an ERP system. For the today's demonstration purpose, we're going to use Intact IQ. Um, so we're going to show an order go into intact, we'll be able to see what the credit limits are and um, the balance that's owed to the customer and things like that. So we can see what sort of information by and large, at least at a high level gets, is viewable, that's stored and intact, that's available on sales rep um, for the rep. Um, we'll show a couple of things that you might not have known that we support on sales rep that kind of would be just, would have basic configuration, maybe some small, work uh, on our side depending on what your setup is um, or what we're taking out the ERP uh, to begin with now but nothing too crazy and then we're just going to touch base very very briefly on what we kind of would recommend as as devices um, we're not going to go too in depth on that because there are a broad range of devices but we'll just kind of maybe nitpick a couple of questions that have come in over, over the last few years uh, just to give a bit of clarity on that Uh, the benefits of this would be, as I said, you'd have a fresh overview of sales rep if you last received your training on the older kind of 1.9 X version. Uh, now we're up to like 2.3, I believe, 2.3 or 2.3.2. Um, and the user interface is really cool and nice and fresh and crisp and very easy to use. And uh, yeah, just really, really nice to use. So there's been lots of improvements since then. Um, We'll, you'll be able to know what additional features are available to use in sales rep that you didn't know that were there. Um, there are others as well. I'm just covering a, a snippet of ones that seem to come in to our support and services team every now and again. Um, so I'm just going to cover those. Um, we'll be able to, you'll be able to know what are those recommended devices and why. Um, and yeah, just a better understanding of uh, a better understanding for your reps on the road of how best to utilize their time for order processing. Because look, nobody wants to double job, nobody wants to create more overheads. No, nobody wants that. We, we, people buy into our platform uh, because it saves time and it saves, uh, saves money ultimately, and it makes your orders submit quicker and it makes business faster. And that's what we want to do. And we want to help with that. So what I'm going to be using today will be um, a web-based version of sales rep that I'm going to be sharing my screen with. And I will be uh, running through a couple of couple of things here. I'm going to be showing off periodically our Intact IQ system uh, to show that information as it kind of populates. And yeah, sure, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, I will uh, turn off my camera because just for the moment uh, while I'm sharing the screen with sales rep but I'll jump back on now in a, in a short while and again if you have any questions please do type them in as you're going along and I'll field them all at the end. Thank you. There.
Brad stuff. So you should be able to see my screen. Uh, I would think. Uh, hopefully you can. Um, I don't see any questions in yet. So hopefully it's not. Hopefully you're not telling me that you can't see my screen. You should be able to. Um, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, look at the look at the catalog broadly. So. Um, it would probably be fair to say that most of our customers who have sales rep also probably have a web shop, but there are certain people, certain customers who have sales rep and do not have a web shop. And that's that's absolutely fine for their business needs. For the likes of a web shop user who does not use utilize sales rep, um, the catalogs can be the exact same or they can be run fully independently. Um, you th certain things can be omitted from one that are not in the other, so you can have a full catalog on sales rep and have a partial catalog on the web shop, and kind of kind of the inverse of that as well. Um, so in terms of say to to, to simplify the creation of of product uh, of of a, of a catalog management um, for the likes of sales rep, for example, as as is the same at web shop. Um, you could, from a, an implementation standpoint, or even through the, our support desk, if a product is available on the likes of an ERP and you just immediately want it to be available on sales rep, um, that's a very easy configuration that can be done um, where we can uh, sync auto create those products. So anything that is available in the ERP will just become available and visible on sales rep. It's very easy catalog management, doesn't really have much involvement in terms of like back office management. It can just be there um, with very very little overhead the only thing is as you'd understand for web shop that's probably less you're probably less likely to want to do that because it's it's in the public eye and your products will probably need to have content applied descriptions images things like that that would need additional rules in place to have those auto created but for sales rep broadly i know that the, your, your rep is going <clears> to <throat> ultimately need that information eventually but the rep will be able to at least sell the product, talk about the product, uh, but sell it from their device once it's on their device. Um, and then, you know, you in the background can add that content in terms of images and descriptions and stuff like that in the background. So um, you probably have less of a, of a need to have that content there immediately for sales rep, um, I would imagine. Um, you like I mentioned before, there before in one of the other sessions, um, there can be multiple rules that are that are put in place for bringing products on or offline, depending on what like the status of a product is on the ERP system or workflow status, whatever that might be. Um, in terms of a question that comes up uh, from time to time is what is live and what is not. So, um, sales rep has the ability to get live pricing out of uh, the ERP system. Um, but there is a base layer of pricing that's there to, uh, to begin with that gets imported from the ERP. So, for example, where I'm just perusing the catalog, not really choosing a customer yet, I can see a list of products that I have here. And those products and those prices are what we, we would import from the ERP uh, on an overnight or, or, you know, few hourly basis, uh, depending on the size of your catalog. That that import would be, you know, it could be every two hours, three hours, one hour. It really, it really just depends on the size of the catalog. Um, if it's, you know, 100,000 SKUs in comparison to 5,000 SKUs, well, there has to be some sort of time difference before we can, you know, we can separate out the amount of times we call those products in, in from your ERP. Um, in this case here, you know, this is uh, connected into Intact IQ, as I said. And this is pulling in all the nine default selling bands, of which one gets nominated as the quote unquote standard list price. Typically, if maybe you have like a, a retail price list or a, a cash desk price list, this is usually what's nominated. More likely because it's probably your most expensive uh, price list so that when a rep goes in front of a customer and he or she is showing off these products in the list to uh their their customer then those products uh initially will show you know a higher price but if i choose something like say um 
what's a good example? Let me see. I'll choose a customer first of all. So new order. Just gonna add a host of products. And I can see immediately that what it's done is it's synced into the ERP system. So it sees what products are available for, sorry, what pr custom pricing is set in place for that customer. So if the pricing doesn't change, it means that this customer's price is 12 euro. This customer's price is 26. This customer's price is, is 20. But the initial price that we've seen here was different. So take note that that is 26 euros. And that is SKU AW2. So it's 26 euros. That order is gone. We'll just go back to the listing page. So the actual, so that the listed price we had is 67 euro, but we caught, but for that customer for demo one, we could see that the live pricing, as was the case on, on Intact IQ, was uh, 26 euros. Um, so it's just, it, it's just showing that when you're pulling in that price for that customer, it is pulling in the actual price that is set on, 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 on the ERP system. So the way we look at it is it's that's 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 you know that's the, one of the the main benefits of sales rep because if you are raising a sales order directly from from the ERP system that is what you're going to get in that real time um in terms of what the customer sees or, or what the customer can sorry beg your pardon sorry what the rep can observe currently as far as i know what who i'm logged in as is somebody who sees all the customers who are stored in the ERP system. But if you have reps that are regionally based or based off of different uh, work areas in your ERP system, you'd have a rep code. Um, it's usually denoted by like a two to three character set of letters or numbers. Um, each customer account or BP code, depending on the ERP system you have, is denoted with these, with these codes. When you create a login on sales rep, whether it's five reps or 10 reps or whoever the case might be. If each rep, they say if somebody has the metro area and then like take Leinster, we have the Northeast, the Southeast, uh, the Midlands, the met met metropolitan area, each rep might have their own region. So depending on the customers in, their, in that region, their account codes will be associated to that rep code. And then the login to sales rep will be associated to those rep codes. Rep code or codes, it can have multiple. If somebody wants to see every customer that's on the ERP, we just don't assign any rep codes. Equally, if maybe somebody in the office wants to have like a sales rep login to mimic what their reps can see on the road, uh, which is fine. Um, the best thing we can suggest is to create the login, you know, you know, the, the login that's appropriate to the office uh, or the head office account, and then associate all in use rep codes to that login. So it means when somebody is logging into sales rep and syncing all the, cus the customers, customers get synced from the ERP, base pricing gets synced from our platform, which we already imported already but beforehand. Um, stock is not live it is based off of that import so i suppose again depending on the catalog that is depending on the catalog that's in use um or sorry the catalog size rather if somebody has a you know medium sized catalog we're talking 5 to 10000 SKUs the catalog can be updated once every you know approximately depending on the ERP system we're talking approximately 3 3 hours to 4 hours of which case when you're using sales rep, just as a rep, get into the habit of downloading your latest customers, downloading your latest products and just get into that habit. And then the cat, this, the app will, will auto update in the background and keep your stock up to, up to, up to, to scratch. Um, in terms of option products. So we've noticed a few times before that with sales rep, and maybe this is more associated to customers who um, 
maybe just have sales rep and they don't have that visualization of, of seeing it on the web shop. Um, we support product with options on sales rep in the same way that we do on web shop, but it's just to kind of give a, a brief overview. So I'm in the back end management interface of our uh, one of our demo web shops, um, which is also linked to Intact IQ and this version of sales rep. So as you can see here, I'm just going to log in as a as that same customer. So we'll look up a product or options. Let's look up a, should we look up a nice laptop? And we can see here, uh, What's one that has a good amount of options? Yes, we'll use we'll use that one there. Um and maybe one that has a price on the ERP system. Okay, well, look, um, I can still use this as an example on you because there's a base price. Uh, so if I go into um, the view this option, I can obviously see that there are two options here. There's two base options of a processor and uh, the color that's assigned. If I click on the edit options button. I can see this here where we've added the SKU codes as we, and you can see this from another webinar that we have. We've, these are the SKU codes that exist in the ERP this code here, it's it's actually a fake product. You could have you could have a, the, the actual parent product can be a real product code or it can be a fake product code. The ones that really matter are the ones that are actually set as the options because that's what's going to get passed into the ERP onto the sales order. You're nominating those those um, those product codes to the appropriate option. In this case, we're basing it on processor and color, but maybe there's other variations that you want to add. Like if somebody wants to build out say a laptop in this case, they want to choose between um, the color, the memory, the specification, screen size, you know, any sort of variable that you really want the customer to be able to choose from. In this case, they're choosing things that have been pre predefined. So the options that are under processor are these AMD and Intel ranges. What's under color are all of these cousins, colors that are down here. Um, and then how they, how they are being displayed on the web shop just the web shop in particular is that it's showing it as a the processor as a drop down and the colors as a nice little button. Now in, in terms of sales rep, so there's a small little button over here in the top right hand corner called see options. And here we go. Um, by the way, you'll just have to excuse the fact that there's no images here. Um, when I'm using sales rep on the web-based version for these for these demos, unfortunately, for some reason, it just omits the images. Um, I don't know why, uh, but rest assured on a regular version of sales rep, um, the images for the options or indeed the images that you see would see here in the product display here on the left-hand side, up to four images uh, per product, as well as, well as the uh, the option images. So I suppose the two things would be from a, from a, a rep's point of view, A, they can see the product image in the options, they can see the stock, they can see the codes, what's available, the prices per each, but also um, uh, they can see what those options are. So apart from just you know seeing what the product is, they can see if there's like 10 different options that are here, they'll see those options 
and then depending on how they want to view this as well they have a matrix view as well so if they want um, apart from just ordering like this here or you know adding as favorites if they're looking at it as a matrix view you know they can just click onto the matrix view and see what's actually available and then order it in that way so if they if you if you can imagine if you had a lot of different options with a lot of different products they could just go through each option and just put in you know 10 20 or 202 or whatever the case might be um, and it just means that it makes that order and process a lot a lot easier but it, it, it's to cover some of that some products that have a small amount of options and some that have a massive amount of options um, I, the next thing that has come up a couple of times for sales rep has been favorites so um, on the web shop I suppose it's probably uh, well, actually, you know, on, on sales rep, as you've seen it there a moment ago, um, you know, you can absolutely add option or add favorites to it to a product by denoting the little star that we have here, both in terms of like the parent product or the um, um, or the option itself. Um, at which point, you know, if I go into a customer account and then click on favorites. Um, it defaults to both, but if I go into rep favorites, download latest or view and catalog, which brings me into the actual catalog view here, um, I can see just favorites to work off of. Um, but if I do look at these favorites here, as I mentioned, this is mostly what the reps will generally tend to do, they'll work off of their own. But if you are in a scenario where, you know, you're a rep that's visiting a customer, but they do have a web shop and they're happy to use the web shop, but you still want to have that relationship to see what they're ordering or what they like. Um, you can, of course, you know, from a rep's point of view, as you can from the customer's point of view, look at open order or look at order history and statements, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But even just from a favorites perspective, um, if I go into choose customer favorites, download latest, like this is one that I just added there, there the other day. So if I go back into the web shop as that customer, go into my account favorites. So these are the, these are this user's favorites. So I'm logged in as graymadafixsoftware.com. Now, there are, let me see, probably a lot there. There are 17 log web logins that use, that have an email associated to demo one, meaning that that amount of users will log in and they have access to place orders. Um, each of them will have a certain amount of favorites. So if there was one web user, then there would be one set of favorites. But in this case, there's like 17. There's only, what do we have? Eight or nine, nine, nine favorites here. On sales rep, we can see that there's a lot more than nine. But what when you choose customer favorites, what it's actually doing is it's, it's synced in all of the favorites for all of those 17 uh, web users. So the rep can very clearly see all of those favorites that have been added on the web for all of those customers. So he or she can, you know, from this page, just start ordering those products directly. Or um, if they go into recent products, um, these are products that get, uh, they can be pushed manually by clicking download. But um, for, most, for most sales rep users, we set up a, a feature that every day we import a set of recent recent um, the recent products for all customer accounts. Uh, it means two things. One, um, from a rep's point of view, here um, they can see all of the recent products. It's the products 
of the last 30 orders. If it's 30 orders with two products, then the, each, then they'll see 60 products here. If it's 30 orders with 30 products, then you know they'll see whatever it is, uh, 900 plus um, products on this on this list. Um, so that's the way it shows. But it's it's a mixture of orders from the ERP system and orders from the web shop from from sales rep. It's just something. It's whatever hits the ERP. The only thing is the the product obviously has to exist both on our platform in the management interface and also in the ERP system. Um, but yeah, it's good for seeing maybe if somebody ordered something and it wasn't ordered directly with the rep or it wasn't ordered in the web shop, maybe it was somebody who like called in, maybe they shouldn't have, but they did. And it was put on, the, on their account and very quickly they can jump in here and see what it was and you know roughly tie it back to when it was ordered. And then apart from um, uh, apart from that as well, another thing uh, another thing that sales rep supports is uh, uh, purchase purchase history. Uh, so not to di to differentiate, but just to differentiate between order history. Order history we have here where we're showing, you know the sales order from a order that doesn't have to be based off of the web shop or sales rep. We can see like the the order based off of what the status that's in the ERP. We, we can see that if we go in here to web shop under uh, order history. Yeah, we can see there, what's that? The end sales order ending in 1481. There's the sales order ending in 1481. We can see there's the order, 132.84, and there we go. So that's all matching out of uh, out of the ERP system. That's reading live from 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 Intact IQ currently. Um, the same would be the case with with regards to uh, financial invoices. Um, depending on what the ERP system is, we'll pull the the native record on WebShop. Um, you know, if it's um, another ERP system, you know, it just it 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 does depend, um, and it's this, it's much the same on sales rep. We can see what those uh, records might be there, and um, you can see the overview under the statements there. Um, in terms of the difference between order history and purchase history, so if I take something like, um, yeah, so you have to choose a customer. Go into the catalog. I'm going to take the top product here. So there's a button here called Purchase History. Um, so that'll sync there in a moment. I might just see if we can find another product. Um, there we go. So there we go. So we can see when this customer, sorry, when this this for for this customer, this product was ordered for this customer in a quantity of 43 at a unit price of 14. There's the sales order number back in 2021. So it's good from the perspective that the rep can very quickly see I'm, you know, what was ordered last time. They can quickly see what the price was without having to go into order history and then scroll, uh, scroll through numerous orders to jump in and out and see which product was in which order. So they can very quickly identify on a per product basis what was it, what did they order, how much they paid for it. So there's no ambiguity over you know the the customer saying you know you usually give me a discount or you gave me a discount the last time. They can very very quickly. Um, there and then say, well, actually, no, this is the price you paid, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where it's, it becomes becomes very handy and very, very nice to use. Um, a couple of, before we kind of run through some ERP, some submissions of orders into the ERP, another thing that you might not have known that we, that supported is um, we have a couple, a number of customers who 
they have, I suppose sales rep out of the box has the ability for an order to be, um, sorry, for pricing to be amended. So, you know, you have the price field here and you can edit that price field if you so wish, and that's absolutely fine. Um, there's no problem with that whatsoever. Um, however, um, there's also the inverse of that where we can state that um, it can't. So the rep literally cannot end, uh, edit the price, so depending on what your rules or how much um, you allow your reps to kind of have that sort of freedom, um, they may or may not be able to do that. If we take something like this here, we have, let me just remove all Bardis. So I'm just gonna keep one product. So we have the ability to set what's the minimum price. So like I said earlier on, we, we, we import information and store it so that we're not constantly calling into the ERP system because the ERP system can't handle that sort of constant uh, level of calls all the time. So that's why we take all that information in. And the only thing we, we call into the ERP system in a live sense is the pricing, as it, the pricing at this stage, because it doesn't have an impact on the, the ERP's performance. But in this case here, um, if you have products and you're given free reign, relative free reign to a rep, but with, with a little asterisk, you can nominate a field, whether it's in the, you know, a, a SAP ERP or an intact ERP or Sage or whatever that might be, that when we import that in, that can be nominated as the minimum price field. So you might have a customer and their, the default price is in selling one. They might have a price list that over arcs that and maybe their price list for a product is um, 20, 20 euro maybe there's another field that says that's called minimum price or maybe it's just it's calling called selling too it doesn't matter what it is it, it just matters what we use it for what you tell us what we how we can use it so in selling too or minimum price maybe that's set to 10 euro but you have reps who constantly try and sell this product for 5 euro making you know maybe whether it's at a loss or that it's just no pro there's no profit margin whatever the reason might be we can put it in place that we can nominate whatever field that is. Right now, the minimum price to this that we I can see as I hover over this, this is telling me it's 16 euro. That is the minimum price that I can sell this at. So I cannot click any further until I change that. Then I can continue on. So you have a little bit more control and flexibility over, you know, you're telling your reps, you can discount, but you know. There's, there's a limit uh, in terms of what you can discount it to, you know. Um, so it's just good to know that, you know, that there is that sort of uh, functionality in place to restrict that. Another thing that we've come across a, a number of times is um, products that might have additional information on them that's required for a rep to see or observe other than uh, other than just what stock is available. So we have a number of merchants who want to show maybe what the what the pack quantity is on a product very quickly or what the minimum the, the selling unit in terms of what it is in multiples that it needs to be sold at. So we, again, very similar, you can nominate a field and we can map and display a different color icon button. In this case here, we're saying these, well, wouldn't we all like to get a 55 inch TV for 14 euro, but uh, we're saying that this is sold in multiples of five. That's, or, or, or sorry, it's yeah, a minimum, minimum quantity order is five. Now that can be anything. Min quantity is how it displays. It just shows the first letter of that being the M. It can really display anything in terms of how that how that looks. Min quantity is just how we want it to look, but it can map to any different field as well. So two things can happen. One, it will display it, giving the rep a clear overview of what they should be um of what they should be 
what you call it what what they should be uh, sell, selling in terms of the quantities and then there are other options as well again similar to the price that we have here the price as aspect of it here that we showed before where we can restrict the product from being for it, that it needs to hit that initial threshold value of five so again if i choose um uh, four i won't be able to add this to the to progress further down but if i add it add five or more i i will so it, it needs that minimum level order so that's something that we uh, we've experienced with as well in terms of kind of search what we've what we found is the most common question that tends to come to us would be um, reps who either have the have the requirement, depending on what their business case scenario is, that they may have. I suppose a good example would be the likes of, say, um, jewelry, for example. If somebody is ordering jewelry. Um, and there is a lot of different products that are getting ordered. A good way we found that that this can be used, it doesn't have to be jewellery, but a, a, an example of this, a practical way that this has been done in the past is if somebody would like to speed up the order and process to use barcodes, we support Bluetooth, bar, we, uh, Bluetooth barcode readers. Um, so the iPad or the Android device would have to be connected up to a Bluetooth device that has the ability to scan, scan barcodes. The barcodes would have to be stored on your ERP system. We'll import the barcode field. We'll associate the barcode field to the SKU code. So the rep can still you know, type in the SKU code or they can type in the barcode um, as I'm doing here. And there's the barcode, there's the product that gets pulled up. But equally, if you can imagine, if you have hundreds of products, you know, think of Christmas time, think of or reps going into jewelers and their jewelry, uh, jewelry shops and they're doing this on a very quick basis. So they'll likely have some sort of point of sale material or physical, man, physical book or whatever the case might be, where they have maybe images of the products and then they have the barcodes beside them uh, to work hand in hand in this regard. So what they'll end up doing is, in this case here, they'd click on barcode scanner, and they'd start scanning. Now I'm just pasting in a code. Uh, I'm just pasting in a code, I suppose I have it set as a keyword. They, they'd, they'd paste in a code, and then if the barcode is associated to that product, then the product gets scanned in, and that's it. So it just goes line by line by line by line by line. So it's really quick, it's really effective. This key, the key, this here is is set as a keyword, but it's the same, it's the same functionality that you'd have in place for the likes of a barcode, except it's not being added in in the management interface. It's been added into the ERP and then brought over to our platform via an import. Um, so for anyone who has that sort of need, again, like think of like pharmacy selling around Christmas, going into di to different um, pharmacies, you know if there's a physical catalog with images and barcodes rather than typing through lots of things because you know there's the scenario where the pharmacies get stocked up really 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 fast um and that sort of time because it's high turnover rate um that may be an avenue to do that instead of um manually typing through sales rep orders it might be a, a good option um but you know there's a different business case scenario for every every situation in the case of this here um, I could have typed in Samsung UE55, found, the te found that television, no problem at all. But what we also find is that customers search for barcodes or par codes um, because reps know a lot of those very, very well. And they have those in the back of their head that they'll just paste in that or they'll have something saved on their, their tablet where they have a set of barcodes that they just paste in and work away. To make that simple, simpler, on web shop or the back end of the web, the back end of the management interface rather, if I go into um, catalog, and 
What was that? TOUM50. So under SEO, we have our keywords. So we can also see here's one I added yesterday. It's just called webinar. Again, if I just remove that, paste in webinar, there's my product. So when you have a product with options, first, first of all, all of the options automatically get added as keywords to the parent. So you're never going to lose the ability to find the option product. Like you'll search for the option product and you'll get brought to the parent product. We can see that here if I go into um, what was it? HP. So like the, there's the options that are added. You know. So if I go SKF5-2, it brings me to the parent product, even though like this is this is an option. Um, yeah, so it, I I think that's broadly what I wanted to cover. Um, of course, we'll we'll check for some questions at the end here, and we'll go through uh, whatever needs to be to be answered. Um, I'll just run through placing an, an order directly into sales rep as well, so you can kind of see that live information. So I will I might as well do this through quick order, the quick order feature that we have here. You forget how good it is. So whether it's through a product code or um, searching for something with, by via description, you can add a multiple amount of products into an order in one quick way. It is it, it is for the type of rep who like knows either the product code off the back, the top of their head, or they're doing like repeat orders with a customer really fast, where they just start typing in something and they can see those products very very clearly and easily. So in this case here, uh, I'll just add the one. It adds in the product. I'm going to change the price to a thousand euro. Check the price. Continue to delivery. Uh, I'll just choose one of the. Or you can add a add a manual address by clicking the enter details, or you can just choose from a pre-synced address that has been synced out of the ERP system. At this stage, by the way, you can you could email your order off, you know, just to, to send it to somebody as a proof, maybe perhaps if you have, you know, Apple your mail app set up on your iPad or your Gmail, your email configured with Gmail. When you hit email order, it'll send a representative, e or a, a generic email of the order overview at each stage of the order process here to whoever you want to send it to. Um, uh, yeah, just bear in mind it, it will only use the default app. So if it's an iPad, it uses the mail app. If it uses an Android device, it uses Gmail. If you have Outlook on your device, unfortunately it's not going to use that um, or you can print it off and save it either way continue to confirm at this stage you can submit it as a sales order or a quotation type depending on what your preference is um, sales order type is all that we have available here but you could submit that through as a quotation meaning that on the ERP system the people who are the sales team who are in on the ERP um, they'll know that it's an order or they'll know that they're looking to get a quote for the information rather than process it as a sales order. Um, signatures can be compulsory or not. Um, it doesn't really matter. In this case here, I'm just gonna add in add in something. And then we will submit that through. So when we're in the back end of the web shop or the, the management interface, we can see here kind of in real and near enough to real time. That order is queued. As I refresh the page once or twice, we'll see that, yeah, there we go. So it submits in super quick. So we can see that the order has passed in the television with the unit price of a thousand uh, euros, the delivery charge, there's my signature, there is my, um, my PO, 
the requested date, uh, and then there's my notes here, leave with the neighbors. So right now we're gonna jump on to Intact IQ. Now, obviously this will differ from, um, you know, ERP system to ERP system, slightly. Um, much of them are quite similar. Um, but broadly, this is what we'll do. So on, on Intact, for example, when I'm looking at the sales order screen, I can just filter it by date there. I can see there's my order. 24th of the 10th, the due date of the 25th of the 10th. It creates the sales order number. Uh, there's my account, there's my PO, and there's the, as I open that sales order, I suppose there's just a few things we can see here that we can match back into um, the management interface and sales rep. So first of all, let's take a gander at sales rep. Let's open up the customer. Order history. There we go. So there's the order I just placed. It's in the status of active. Um, there we go. There's the workflow status of active. Um, so that hasn't been processed yet. So it's still showing as active. We can see as well that that customer has a credit limit of 20 grand and they have a balance of 840 and outstanding orders of Two, ooh, 204 grand. Oh, well, there you go. And um, we'll take a quick look at their account overview. And we can see that they have their <clears throat> 203,000 on order, 20 grand credit limit, and what their credit balance is. And it's the same thing as if they were logged into the management interface. Sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, logged into their account dashboard here, they can see. They have 840.71 to pay off, 20 grand credit limit, and it all ties back into that ERP system. So, I, yeah, I suppose it's just to, diff, to show what you can, that everything ties back in, or at least in principle, everything ties back in for the customer to see, your rep to see, so there's a bit of synergy and harmony there across the platform, across the products. Um, yeah, and then I suppose lastly, what I just want to, I won't get too bogged down into, look, we support all, we support uh, Google Android, we support uh, iOS on iPads. Um, I suppose what we would recommend is that if, 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 if in an organization, if, if somebody has procured recently a number of, you know, Android devices and their, you know, premium devices like, Samsung or Lenovo and they, you know, they're, they're kind of top tier grade A devices, that's fine. You know, they should work and there's no reason why it shouldn't. And the reason why we would generally lean towards the Apple metric is that Apple's software development kit or SDK is very standardized. Not that Google's isn't, but unfortunately from time to time in some rare occurrences, a manufacturer of an Android device may have their own individualistic software on it that can somewhat interfere with how the Android SDK can work and it can interfere or have problems with certain parameters of how sales rep or indeed any app works. Um, it's just that you don't really notice these things because you're not using your your app for, for you know 95% of what it gets used for is personal pleasure, you know, rather than something that's getting used for work on a day in day out basis. Um, Whereas with Apple, um, you know, the same software of an iOS release that gets deployed whenever a new one comes out goes on every single iPad, regardless. Uh, the only thing that restricts it from going on to an iPad is based off of the age of the device. That's it. Everything is very uniform and very much the same. So it's very unlikely that there'd be any issues, shall we say, from maybe a release or an update on sales rep when for somebody who's using an iPad. It's still rare for Android, but it's just that there's more there's more cause for it to occur. But that's the that's just the same on any system. And um, when there's something that's third party that's maybe not 
um, account uh, able to be accounted for on all different types of devices. Um, hope that makes sense. I'm not saying don't buy Android, um, but definitely if you're thinking about getting new devices, maybe just keep an eye on the Apple uh, route. Um, it's probably going to be just the easiest to use, um, or the, the easiest to use slash more what likelihood of, of uh, no issues arising in terms of usability. Okay, um, I'm going to turn on the camera and share my screen again, and then we'll start taking some questions. One moment. There I am again. Okay, um, let me see what questions we have. Now we've one from uh, Nadine. Um, is it possible to import images PDF from the ERP in system into AFIX? Um, that's a, a great question, Nadine. Um, on the images, yeah, I mean it is. Um, so we have the functionality. <clears throat> so it, it, it's ERP dependent as well. Um, so it might be best to just to, to contact our support team or even uh, me me directly um, to be able to uh, facilitate that question on a more specific basis, depending on what your ERP might be. But um, in terms of images, um, yes. Um, so we've the functionality to take a FTP import of your images. So on your your say if it's intact, for example, um, if you had an FTP server set up where you're able to push, we give you an address. You'd put your images in there, name them by a product code, and then they'd get sent across to us. We'd have an image cron or an image import set up to map said images to the appropriate product. It doesn't really matter whether it's web shop or sales rep. I think it's just in the past, it just happens to have been done more for web shop, but there's nothing to say that that wouldn't work for sales rep. Um, I would say though at the same time that, you know, that's good f if you have a catalog where you have a massive catalog and it's you're trying to keep everything very uniform across a team where you have a team of people who are placing images or updating content into one folder. It's good for that, but if you if you if all of your images are by and large sorted as it is, and you have images on most of your products, or if not nearly all of them, and you're just looking to manage some here and there, you you still have that facility through the management interface to bulk upload images in a in a, in a zip file, or to attach them one at a time, um, you know. So either either way, um, either way. Um, in terms of the PDFs, um, I will probably have to come back to you on 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 that that Nadine. Um, I believe that there is something there's something on that you you could attach. Yeah. I think that there's something in the works to get to get that to work. Um, I'll have to just come back to you after the call, um, so or after the webinar. So let me come back to you directly on that. Um, but thanks for the question. And this one is from Philip. Uh, Hi Chris, is this the same for X line, or are the differences in terms of functionality? Uh, good question, Philip. Um, it's broadly the same. Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I don't think that there's anything that have went through that that's specific to one ERP or the other. It's it's all available on the ver vote versions of Intact, on SAP, on on Sage. It's really just down to the different fields that we're able to take in on the on, on the API. Uh, so from from your from your own your own system, for for example, um, 
minimum minimum order minimum price yeah like that's 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 all doable um if there's something you want to get some specific information on by all means uh, reach out to me directly um we can have a conversation around that um but yeah no all that's all that's available uh, some of it configurable some of it, it a small bit of work uh, but all by and large able to be uh, um, applied okay um i don't think there's anyone anyone else um let me just see no not that i can see okay that's great folks um well look thanks for everyone for attending uh, i really appreciate it um, the customer success team will be bringing more content and some training refreshers, new product features into these webinars for at least once a month for the foreseeable future, as I mentioned. So stay tuned for more content. Um, I'm going to be sending an email out as well um, what, uh, after this to all people who attended. We'd like to know what you would like to see from these webinars. Uh, up until now, it's been me and a couple of people who've been looking at questions and you know kind of ad ad hoc stuff that you know from a customer success point of view i've been having conversations with you guys for like the last year or so um um or i've been maybe looking at from my time in the support desk looking at things that frequently get asked frequently come over or, or repeat things that come through training and and then we've as well as you know new product features and we've covered those by and large here but um, I'd like to know what you guys would like to get out of this. Is there something that you would like to be covered? Um, it's a training thing on pricing. It's a content scenario. It's maybe something that is about controlling sales. Whatever the case might be, it may be something that we can cover. It may not be. Um, um, oh, oh, sorry, I'm just, uh, before I knock off, I'm seeing two more questions here. Um, Let's say we, this is from uh, Nur Jahan. And uh, let's say we have various brands. Can we update the images en masse if we want the same image for all the products in a particular brand? Yeah, uh, you can. And uh, there's a few different ways you could do that. Um, there's, there is a feature in, the, this works for sales rep and web shop. There's a feature that should be accessible, I think, under settings um, for you. If it's not, contact our support team and we can do this for you. Um, but you, where you see that like gray, you know, image coming soon overview, um, you can A, use another, another image to be like the image that you would have in place for where an image is not found. Um, or you can broadly upload an image, um, to multiple products. So if you have, you, rather than having say, if it's based on the brand, 10 products, and those 10 products are, you know, Logitech, whatever. Um, rather than putting the, uploading the same image and naming 10 images by the SKU code, um, do it for one. And then in the back end of the web shop, so the back end of the management interface, export out all those products, but the columns to choose would be, uh, I mean, the product code comes by default anyway, but choose image one. And the image one will have a URL. That URL is the link to the image that you've uploaded for the first one. Just copy that URL and pop it into the, into the spreadsheet in all the additional areas for that same SKU code. And then when you re-import that spreadsheet in the product export import area, then you will have applied the same image to that product, whether it's a brand or whether it's, again, you just want to simply have you know, the Logitech brand or whatever applied en masse on those products. Um, um, I think that's, I think that probably covers that. If not, uh, reach out to me uh, direct, um, Nur Jahan. Um, and another one from Philip, can we get the rep app on our PCs here to view what it looks like? Um, it is only available on Android and iOS. There have been a couple of queries on Windows-based machines, like your surfaces and stuff, but it's it's just, it's it's only been nobody's ever really fully 
no, it's never really it's 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 not happened really yet. Like what I'm looking at there is a dev version of this that's based in our our what our, our dev server. It's not something that is available for public consumption, and it's not perfect. Um, you could run a virtual version of Android in your browser, perhaps, um, but it's it's not perfect. You know, it tends to run very very hot and hot and heavy and it doesn't run perfect so i'd still go with the tablet based scenario or tablet based approach you know uh, it's just it wouldn't be a perfect scenario um hopefully that answers your question um but yeah like as i mentioned there before i was signing off uh, i'll be reaching out to to you guys and if you can come back and let me know what you'd like to see in on one of these future webinars whether it's content driven or you know whatever the case might be um we'd appreciate that because we want to make sure that these uh um, webinars are at the the center of what you guys can use and what you can use to get to, to get the most out of the platform. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll talk to you again. Bye bye.